Hey YouTube, what's going on? Well, I own it. I've been saying it for two or three years. That I thought the elites were going to put her in. I was absolutely sure I'd have bet my house and the farm on it. I was stunned at the results. I didn't want to see her get in. But I didn't want to see him get in either. We had no real choice in, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. So I told you I was worried about those that had the visions, dreams, and prophecies that Trump was going to win and what, the, what was going to happen if he didn't. Well, they don't have to worry because he is in. So who is actually owed the credit is... It's only been a few days, so I haven't had a chance to actually think about all these possibilities. But do we owe it to the people for voting him in? Do we owe it to God for hearing our prayers and helping him to get in supernaturally? Or has the elite snookered us again and owned both candidates so it didn't matter? And those are all things that I have to give a lot of thought about. You know, we even go into the betting side of things in which Las Vegas had her over 80% to win and Donald at roughly 20. Well, the only way Las Vegas could make money, good money, is if she lost. So Las Vegas made good money with Donald getting in. So do I think God intervened through our prayers? Well, that's very possible. Because with all with God, all things are possible. Do I think this means that we're on the road to happy times again and America will be great again? No. I don't buy that for a minute. And let's just go over a couple of things here. He actually hasn't got the, the, the full victory yet because in December the electorate will meet and award the electoral votes. I, I don't see it happening, but that doesn't mean that it is not a, a possibility that somehow, some way, some of the states that he won could go against him and award the votes to her, thereby awarding her the victory. Now, can you imagine that scenario? Let's you just fantasize for a few minutes with me. Look at the protesting going on now, whether it is professional protesters or not. Just see, you see what's going on since she did not come out on top. So imagine, if you will, a victory being taken away from him and awarded to her. What do you think his supporters would do? Well, there's chances are, if one side does it, the other would. They'd probably have some paid protesters mixed in there with regular people, and they'd go to raise in hell about it. Those two groups of people might actually end up confronting one, one another in the streets. And you could have one really big mess on your hands. But I don't see that happening. But, but, but I do give thought to the possibility that, that this may not be over, but I, I believe it is, but it may not be. I still don't believe that the vote counts. That's why this is, this is a tough call for me on what actually happened. You know, I, I myself do want to believe that, that the good Lord intervened. I, that's what I really want to believe. But knowing that the votes don't count, if they counted, they'd have no control over 
everything and look at it. The Federal Reserve controls the economy. The Rothschilds control the banks and the money worldwide. I could go on and on and on and on and on about different things that they control. And so I still got this sinking feeling that there's something more to this than, than what we know. Now, this article, and I've read a, a longer list, but this article goes on to list some people that are in contention have been thought of that he would place in a cabinet in different positions. So, of course, you're going to have Chris Christie, you know, Mr. Bridgegate, mm -hmm. who always said that he didn't do it, knew nothing of the bridge being closed. And then you have um, some other big names that are kind of troubling to me. And we'll just skip by Corey Lewandowski, who he, he let him go from his campaign, or he resigned from it. But it's Jamie Damone, chief executive of J.P. Morgan Chase. You have to be kidding me. I mean, the guy is, is you know, basically a, an insider, you know, crooked. So the, the, the thought that he would be even mentioned on a list is, is, is begins to make you wonder. And I, you have Harold Ham, Continental Resources. He's not listed in this article, but in a, in a further list that I've read. And how do you take someone who's a billionaire and stick him in where he has something to do with possibly the energy sector? I mean, wouldn't that be kind of a conflict of interest? Do you think he might favor some things that might go his way and improve his own company? Who knows? But that, that seems kind of weird to me. And you come on down here, and you find Stephen Hutchin, Goldman Sachs executive, the Goldman Sachs gang, you know? Another thievery outfit. So what is going on when these people get mentioned as possible appointees? And of course you got Rudy Giuliani, you know, Mr. New York that helped clean up all the stuff from the attack and get it carted off and guarded and everything so that, you know, maybe a complete investigation of stuff Never was done on everything. And the report actually, I believe, if I remember right, it actually didn't get investigated for possible explosives. I thought that's what I remembered. And then you have Peter Thiel. Here's another billionaire investor. So just this brief article with just some of these names and, and you can find the other articles elsewhere that look like the Billionaire Boys Club mixed in with some very questionable high profile banks executives who border on the side of criminality. And then we find a recent article and whether he's just trying to be nice and presidential, who knows? But, you know, she called him up to offer congratulations. And he was very gracious, couldn't have been nicer. Talking about Hillary. Lovely call. Couldn't have been nicer. She is very strong and very smart. That's complimentary. And then he extended uh, 
something to Bill as well. Very talented guy, talented family. Couldn't have been more gracious. Very, very, really very nice. So that seems absolutely contrary to the things that we saw and heard in the debates and throughout the campaign. So the tone seems to have changed, and I'm, I'm worried that, um, that the people's hopes could be dashed. We've heard hope and change before. We got eight years of that, and you see what it was. Some of us had a feeling what it would turn out like, but didn't know exactly how it would transpire. And now we have a, you know, we have this guy who's in now, and we have hope that things will change. Um, whether that's realized or not, or whether we're going to get more of the same, we're going to have to just wait and see. We can't say things are getting better just because he won. We can't have the attitude that didn't like him, but I'd rather, you know, I didn't want her in, so I took him. Got to hold his feet to the fire. He said a lot of things that he was going to do. It sounded good. It looked good. It felt good. It smelled good. You thought it was good. But the words are hollow. It's the actions that count. So we're going to have to see actually what he does. So I didn't want either one of them. You know, I done said that. So I'm going to give him a chance. I'm going to give him six. I'm not going to give him a hundred days. His first one hundred days. I'm going to give him sixty days. Because he made some statements that he's going to do some stuff on his first day in office. And if after sixty days he ain't started doing nothing that he said he would do, I, I'm, I'm going to really be thinking that we got hooked again, and that the elites. We're going to get their person in, no matter whether it's her or not. You know, it's entirely possible they changed the game plan and decided, well, Hillary's bringing too much heat about the males and stuff. We'll just go ahead and let the Don get in. You know, and, and you make it, you see little weird things like when he's talking and stuff, he's got the thumb and the forefinger together and the three fingers up making the six sign, you know. And you can find that same thing in like the Freemasons uh, encyclopedia of, you know, different ways they stand and how their feet are positioned, the handshakes, the hand signals. And that is actually listed in there as one of them. So whether he is a Mason or not, I, I've never proven that he is. I've never been able to find anything that he is. So we'll just have to see. We know how the book ends. The Bible, the Holy Bible, we know how the story goes. Well, I don't think we're on easy street just because he got in. I think what's important now is, is just getting close to our Father in Heaven and to our Lord Jesus. Hunkered down, because I just got to, I just got this feeling that some big things are going to come our way in the very near future. I don't think we got to wait a long time before they get here. I think they're already on the way here, and maybe God intervened to give us this time to to get with Him to get closer, because it's just a flicker of time. How long we're here? 70, 80, 90 years? That ain't nothing compared to an eternity. So eternity is forever. And that's where God wants you to be, is his, his kingdom. With him, forever. He don't want you to fall into the, the pit with the evil one and all his demon buddies forever. So let's use our time wisely, shall we? And keep our eyes open what this man is going to do.